And before I get to, I do want to speak to you about um, your barber, caring for yourself with your barber items. Now, gentlemen, this is what a, this is my husband's favorite type of collar. It's a wingtip collar. It's made out of pure linen, and it's quite stiff. Uh, if ladies, if you tend to want to start, uh, not starch, but use a heavier um, soda to uh, stiffen it up a bit, that would help. But this, once washed, if you don't use a stiffener, it shall it, it shall be quite uh, easy to. And so let me show you here. And this is a a little bit different of a collar. It just folds over, and in fact, one of our dear friends, Henry Harlan, this is one of his favorite colors, but you can see how it's a, a little bit quite softer after it's been washed. And if you don't put much stiffener ladies on there, um, it's po possibly a little bit, uh, would I say, more comfortable for the gentleman, but if they're going to a formal occasion, you always want them stiffened. And there's Tommy's favorite color. Of course, uh, these are the cuffs of which I was speaking about. Now, these cuffs, as with the collars, they button into your shirt, gentlemen, and these would go over the the little bit of cuff that comes on your shirt. And, gentlemen, you button these on, or your wife, or your your footman, or your butler would help you with these, and you would put these on. And these are what? <laughs> Gentlemen, you must not do this. If you are doing this as well, I can, I, I feel very sorry for your wives. This is what Tommy is coming home with late at the yard with little notes written and scribbled all over in numbers. And I cannot tell you how often I have to soak these for him. Uh, if I'm not feeling well, of course, uh, Miss Doyle or Miss Lee ha handles the soaking and the cleaning, but I try to help as much as possible. As you recall, I am quite the rebel, and I don't leave everything to the domestics. So those are his cuffs. Now I'm going to show you this wonderful ascot that he has. Such a beautiful gold brocade. It's very rich. And it has the black swirls with a bit of green and the gold and a, just a bit of the brown in there. And then a wonderful tie pin would be added to this wonderful ascot. And it looks wonderful, especially with the white waistcoats. It's absolutely wonderful. So gentlemen, this is another piece that would look stunning um, if you are in the offices at the yard, in, 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 not out in the yard, but in the offices at the yard, or if you're attending the meetings later with Lord Perry, um, my husband, as well as Mr. Ismay, and all the others there from White Star. If you are there attending those things, this would be permissible. And of course, this is very fine for late afternoon tea or a formal occasion as well. Now, gentlemen, I was speaking to you, and I have not forgotten, of the buttons that you would button into your shirt, your formal shirt. And these have the leaves on them. I know you can't see them quite well. And they all have these beautiful leaves. Of Tommy just loves the gold with the leaves. So these are some of his favorite. And of course, along with his the pearl uh, buttoning and buttons that I've given him at our wedding. Now you also, gentlemen, you also will have cufflinks that uh, attach in the back. Um, they go right through and they hold your shirt cuffs together. And Laddie, how are you, my dear? Are you having a good time? Did you have a good time? I see, my sweet, that you had oh, Uncle William left you with the bone, and then you have another bone there. Oh, I suppose you possibly, are you, are you a bit thirsty, Laddie? Are you wanting to be about? Mm -hmm. Well, Laddie, I think I'm going to call for our domestic here at the house. And if you'd like, yes, yes, that's the bell, sweetheart. I shall, I shall release you from your leash here, and then you can be about as you please. And then if you choose to go out there, she will take you to get some water. 
and there she is. So, laddie, be, be a good boy, and you, laddie, you be a good boy, and go ahead, sweetheart. Here, I shall put this here on you, and you can go to Miss Doyle now. Go ahead, laddie. There you are, laddie. You may go now. Daddy. All right. So, um, I wanted to speak about the grooming. Um, Oh, Miss Doyle, don't forget, uh, uh, if you have a bit of uh, a treat, I'm sure uh, Laddie will come running. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Doyle. Uh, Laddie is staying here with me? Oh, are oh, you waiting to see what she has? He is waiting to see what she has. Hmm, if you don't have something, I guess he's not moving. <laughs> Uncle William spoils him so. All right, so we have, we have here... Uh, gentlemen, your socks. Uh, these are fine formal silk socks and we bid Laddie adieu and he will see us later. And here are your fine silk socks. And, and gentlemen, just like the lady socks, they have a decorative um, embroidery up and down the side of the leg, just like the, the stockings I had shown you for us ladies. So, so these are, uh, gentlemen, these are perfect. Um, if you're working in the offices at the yard, or like Lord Perry, this would be permissible. Tommy I would not suggest because he, he needs a heavier um, sock that are always needing to be mended because it, his feet get so cold um, due to the poor circulation in his legs, so he needs a warmer sock. But gentlemen, that is your socks, um, a, a fine pair, and there are woolen socks of course for your days and for the men at the yard that are working. There's a woolen sock that would be absolutely perfect to keep your legs warm. Now, I have here, and I wanted to talk a bit about this. This is a mustache trimmer. It looks similar to the gentleman's straight razor, but it is a trimmer for your mustache. And with your mustache, in the evenings, if you want to keep it absolutely in place, there are, I don't have one with me, but gentlemen, there are mustache um, holders that it, it's a band that goes over the mustache and goes around, it fastens around your head while you sleep. And it keeps, if you, if you trim your mustache and groom it the night before a special event or before work the next, excuse me, the next day, oh, I think I need a glass of water. I am just a bit dry. I do thank you for letting, allowing me to have that. And so your mustache trimmer um, will help you to groom it, get it exactly where you want it, and then put on the, um, the uh, strap, it's a mustache strap that you can put on at night while you're sleeping and your mustache will be perfectly in place for you to go to work the next day or to your formal event. Now over here, we all know, gentlemen, that you all, you have one of these, and just about every gentleman at the yard is still using one of these, my husband included, but he has found a newer safety razor, which I'm going to show you, I, I will show and tell you about, but this is your straight razor, gentlemen, that you use to um, groom yourself and your beard. Also, gentlemen, I don't have with me, forgive me, uh, but you would have a, a groomer's cap, you would have your shave cap. And you would normally, if you have your, your shave uh, quite often at the barber, that there, the, he has the cubicles on the wall and you would have your name engraved onto your shave mug and then inside that mug you would have your, your, your razor would be there and your brush and anything else that's personal to you so when every time you go to see your barber he just pulls it out of your little spot and he's ready to work on you so we all know about the straight razor uh, ladies quite quite uh, dangerous please do not handle these and as, as least as you can please do not handle these here we have gentlemen is called the barber's manual and I borrowed this from my husband and it's by A.B. Bowler and it's, it's not very expensive at all. The price says, price says right on $3. It's actually very, very um, reasonable. And this here is, tells you, if you go through it, 
you can, it, it shows all about um, how to properly uh, shave someone or, or shave yourself and how to go about and you know when to t put your the soap on. Now you always want to start, you always want to start with a hot towel, gentlemen. It's quite relaxing. So if you have somebody working with you uh, or working on you, perhaps for a special occasion, um, or your, yourself, but it's quite relaxing to have someone else work on you for, uh, for that. And if you, or if you go to the barber, and you should have a warm towel, you just warm up a warm towel over near the fire, a damp warm towel, and that will open all the pores before you do your shave. And then, of course, you create a nice lather there in, in the wash tub, in the wash basin, and you start, of course, putting on all your shave cream. Uh, I can recommend uh, one that my husband uses, and of course, it's being going to be used aboard uh, the soap will, will be carried aboard all the Olympic glass liners, Titanic and Olympic, as your first class stateroom soap. But it's called Vinolia Shaving Soap, and you can get that, gentlemen, um, at any one of the town barbers or any one of the town stores. Uh, anywhere in Belfast has them, and Vinolia. It's very, very gentle on the skin. It's a combination of several cold creams. Uh, you couldn't ask for better for your skin, so it would, it would keep it nice and smooth and soft and moisturized, so I suggest to use that. Now, there's something that is coming out. It's, it, it's been talk of it, and one of the gentlemen out the yard let my husband give this to me to bring into you. It's called the safety razor. This is the new rage. This is the safety razor, gentlemen. And my husband will, will not miss getting one of these. And how much safer does this look compared to, of course, and it seems like, oh, goodness, i broken, i broken his straight razor. Oh no. <laughs> um, here's the straight razor. Here's the safety razor. And this is, this is just now coming out. It's all the rage. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, you might want to consider this for your gentlemen uh, so as uh, to keep them uh, a little bit safer in their shave. And gentlemen, you, you, it'll make it much easier for you to do the shave yourself as well. So this is called the safety razor. And that comes in its own little box with this extra areas for the razor blades, as you can see right there. So, so that's the new thing that's all coming out, gentlemen. You're all going to want to have that. Now, let's see here. I want you to show you, gentlemen, of course, with any fine suit, unless, of course, you're the one, these hard workers down there in the yard, and you're under there, and you're doing all the work, I don't suggest you you all have your best handkerchief with you because it's going to become quite soiled because you have to wipe your brow because you're working so hard. Oh, goodness. I have so much respect for every, each and every one of you gentlemen, how hard you work. But I brought a couple of the linen handkerchiefs of Tommy's. And here, right here, are some beautiful cotton ones with his initials on them. And many a times he'll have them in his pocket at the yard. They leave white or ivory. They don't come home that color. <laughs> and this one seems to be of a silk. And it's a, it's a plain one. And actually, I do remember this one. Gentlemen, the silk one was given to um, my husband, Tommy, uh, from his mother, Aunt Lizzie. And she had given this to him for our wedding. So this is his silk wedding. And goodness, what is this I have here? Oh, Ladies, do not tell. I still have, do you remember, I had attended a Christmas party uh, be, long before I was married. And at that Christmas party, there was two fine gentlemen, Thomas Andrews Jr., my Tommy, and Henry Harlan. Oh, I, I couldn't make my decision. Well, at that dance, of course, I came home. They each left me with each of their handkerchief happens to be full memories. I still have Henry's right there with the H. Oh, don't tell. And right there with that, I have my dance card. And as you can see, it was quite filled. 
who was mostly Thomas and Henry. As I co try to open this up to show you, it was quite full, front to back. <laughs> A nice memory, just please do, do not tell. Now, I had brought something with me today that I wanted to share with you. My Tommy is so sentimental. And here, from one of the first times we spent out back of our Dara, there's a beautiful, beautiful bush back there. And here are their leaves. And he kept these from one of the first times we spent and we caught it out back of our dar, and we sat and we had some tea, of course under the watchful eye of Aunt Lizzie, and he had saved these and pressed these for me. So I thought to share those with you, and they are becoming quite crispy, so I think I'd best place them back just the way he had them. And so, where, sh where shall we go next? I have so many things to show you. Well, oh! Oh, one of my most favorite. I'm so proud of this. This is Tommy's pin. Now, you, as you all know, he uh, belongs to the um, Society of Naval Architects. Um, it's founded in 1893. Thomas Andrews, Jr., my dear, is a member of the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. And this is his membership pin he acquired in 1901 um, when he was becoming um, they have a lot more uh, responsibility at the yard. Next time I have a show, I will have to bring you his books, his original books that he has and he looks at from time to time and he uses those um, to refer to during his shipbuilding. But there is the pin that the gentlemen that are part of the society have been given as a gift. And I'm so very proud of that. And he keeps that in the frame all the time. I asked him to wear it to special events, but he chooses to keep it there. Here are some photographs. You can see these very well. Um, these the photographs have a bit of a gloss to them. And then here's another gentleman. And if you can see uh, Mr. Rockefeller, he has his uh, top hat, just like Uncle William. He has his, his um, pocket watch and the pocket watch chain. Uh, also, of course, uh, that Uncle William did not show you when traveling and going out, gentlemen, you should have your white gloves. And I do believe they are here somewhere to show you. I'm sure I will put Oh, there they are. They fell to the ground. Shame on me. All right. So when you are attending a formal location, um, you're going to, to a lady's house, or you're, of course, like I said, you're attending a formal occasion or a wedding, you will want to wear your white gloves, your formal gloves. And these are of a soft cotton as well and um, are very comfortable. Please do not forget these and do not forget your walking stick as they all go together. And then here's another wonderful, very fine family and you can see the father. He is there wearing the, they must be go to a formal occasion because as you can see, the mother is dressed in just a fine, fine gown. And the father, he shows you he's got a black waistcoat and then he has the uh, white wingtip tie with the white collar. And of course the children are dressed very fine as well. All pressed and ready to go. And then we have here the LaRouche family. Oh, my, my, fa my, my family is, is very, very um, uh, quite in admiration of, of all the work that Mr. LaRouche does. And here he is going, uh, he's always dressed most formal, and here he is, and he has on his white wingtip collar and his white formal tie, just like Tommy. And then we have another gentleman, I do believe. Yes, here he is. Now here are, and this gentleman, this is more of a morning suit, he, a morning frock, and he has the morning trousers on here, the striped trousers. And then in a moment I'm going to show you Gentlemen, uh, you saw the coat, the cutaway uh, corporate coat or traveling suit that Uncle William was wearing. And of course you have uh, and Uncle William's black uh, ascot with his tie pin, same as this gentleman. There, gray gloves also, you have white and gray. As Nellie had forgotten a moment. They do also come in gray. So there you are. And he has the, the taller stand-up color 
that I was showing you that uh, is one of the ones that Henry actually wears. So um, there you are, another fine gentleman. I, oh, we have one more. And here we are. And gentlemen, if, if you do have to, uh, if you need aid in, in seeing things when you're working um, in business at the yard, um, wherever it is that you're working, and if it's in more of a business type uh, of uh, occupation, you're going to need a monocle or, of course, your glasses as, your spectacles, I should say, as um, Uncle William was wearing. And there you are with the pocket watch chain. And I do hope everyone can see that. I do apologize for the gloss to the pictures. Now, gentlemen, when you are storing, I don't know, here we are. Here's another pair of spectacles. And these were actually in here. And I do apologize for the age of the case. These belong to my late father, who I miss dearly. And he would wear these right on the bridge of his nose. Um, you can, you can, gentlemen, if you wanted to put a little bit of a, of a holder or a chain here, that's fine. But um, my, my father would just place these on the bridge of his nose. And what a nice memory. But I still have that. I miss him dearly. And here, whoop, we have... Do forgive me, I did not have enough tables, so forgive me for placing items on the floor. Here, gentlemen, is your collar box. And your, for your ties and your, and your cuffs, your, your, your collars, your cuffs and your ties. Gentlemen, this is your box to keep everything in its place. It has a little clasp and then opens. And then inside you would have your, your formal ties, your black, your white, and then your collars in there. So I do hope you all can see that. So a place for everything, yes, as my father would say. Right. And I did, I did show this to you before, but here is my Tommy in his wedding clothes. Now pay attention here. Um, he is wearing the Prince Albert frock, of which I am about to share with you as he did allow me to bring it here today. And we have here and here. All right. Whoops. Nelly is knocking everything over with her skirts. We have here Tommy's Prince Albert frock that he wore to our wedding. And I can see I have a little bit of mending to do around, around the collar. But there you are. And then you have your button vented back. And of course, it's all double-breasted. But Tommy likes to wear it open. And then here is your formal tails. And I did forget the trousers. Do forgive me. But you can also, uh, gentlemen, you also can wear with your formal jacket you can wear um, your striped morning trousers as well. Depends on the, the occasion and type of day, but there you are. And these are quite, quite comfortable. And I'm always proud to show my husband's things. And excuse me just one moment, please. Right. Well, um, as far as your jewelry, gentlemen, you, I've spoken to you about your couplings. I've spoken to you about your buttons. Um, I'm trying to see what else I may have forgotten. Your rings, your rings, of course, your wedding ring. Um, and for the gentlemen that are not married, some of the finest, um, uh, most handsome rings are the signet rings. And they can be, um, of course, uh, sterling silver and then have the onyx uh, plate on the top and with your to be a signature, your, your initial on top. Now we also have the rings that do open up and that you can also use, believe it or not, to, uh, to, mark your, to stamp and mark your um, correspondence to your ladies. So there are the rings that do that. And there, believe it or not, there are rings that, all, you, that open up and you can use them for whatever you'd like. Now mourning rings for the gentlemen um, when they've lost a loved one, 
Well, they usually can have those rings where you can open up and put a lock of hair, a piece of hair, in the ring. Well, gentlemen, I think I have about covered it for today. I'm trying to think if there's anything I could have missed. I, I have such a wonderful time always sort of, oh, indeed, I cannot find them at the moment. The braces, your suspenders that I was talking about. And dear me, I don't know where they've gone.